Right, terminus postquem and terminus antiquem, specifically um, no limits of dating for events. A terminus postquem is the earliest time the event may have happened. When we go to Gobepi Tepe, for example, um, you'll slowly start to realise that what archaeologists know about Gobepi Tepe is basically nothing. Uh, so, but we, we've, what, what I've managed to do with the lecture I gave on Tuesday and with the lecture I gave on Monday, uh, I managed to sort of eke out uh, the major problems. Um, I had one of the guys on Tuesday peeing everybody off. Um, he kept saying that, um, no, um, I don't believe these things are, are genuine. I'm turning off my phone. I don't believe these things are genuine. Um, and he kept saying, there's no, there's no evidence for any of this and so on and so on. And it really so, sort of upset everybody. So I hopefully I won't get any of that today. But simply because the earliest possible date that Gadepi Tepe was actually created, we have no idea. Um, and, if, and we know when the site was backfilled. We've got a terminus antiquem date when the site was backfilled filled because of carbon date, dating and all the rest of it. Um, so these terms are terms that are used by archaeologists occasionally. Um, and when I use these terms today, you'll know what they mean. So the earliest possible date is terminus postquem. TPQ, um, and the latest possible date is terminus antiquem. Okay, um, I'll just give you I'll just give you an idea of, of what this is about as well. Um, so we will just do this. Um, so so for 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 example, um, to try and get this across, um, it, it, you, the archaeologists usually completely overcomplicate. Um, by using graphs and wonderful things like this, but we're going to make it very, very simple um, by going to this. Um, so, for example, uh, a terminus antiquem. Um, so, say that you've got um, the death of somebody recorded on a tomb, which is 1467. That's the latest possible date that anything could have happened with that bloke, right? Um, the, the person couldn't have moved or anything after um, 1467. The latest time he could have done any, anything was before he died in 1467. That's terminus antiquem, and that's as simple as that. Nothing else can occur after that, but things can occur before that. That's the latest possible date um, that um, something could possibly happen. And I know this is uh, blowing your mind, but don't worry about it, Ellen. Um, and next one. And here we go. Um, so fa say, for example, you find a mosaic on the floor. And we can date that uh, mosaic from the year uh, um, 367, like specifically 367. Nothing could possibly occur before 367, which is above the mosaic. So say, for example, um, somebody's murdered above the mosaic created in 367. It couldn't have occurred before 367. Right? So this is important to what we're doing with the Deppy Teppy today. Um, it's very, very relevant. So... Um, go like this. This is a site that we're going to actually be looking at. Um, I know, know some of you have seen it on weird sci-fi programs and all the rest of it. These weird things stick, sticking up. And Chris has done my head in for the past 86 years saying, I want this lecture. So now she's got it. And if there's any problems from uh, Chris over the lecture today, I'm going to completely ignore her. Because this is for her. This is all about her needs. This is personal, yeah. But, but Godep Tepe itself, um, when it was originally found and excavated in 1995, 90% um, of all archaeologists on the planet said it was faked. It just it cannot be what the archaeologists are saying. And what the archaeologists were saying, they weren't really sure. They, 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 were, they were postulating that the site may have been an ancient temple complex from 6,000 years ago. People were saying, oh, they're actually burial stones. Um, and then people start to say, actually, it's from 7,000 years ago. And then 8,000 years ago. Um, and then the dates go back and back and back. Five years ago, while I was teaching my class originally at Arnside, I kept saying to them in Arnside, because I was doing something completely different from what I was doing down here. I, I, I said that um, everything I'm telling you now, the dates will change. If I'm giving you a date, uh, this happened 5,000 years ago, the archaeologists will be saying this happened 6,000 years ago, um, simply because we're, 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 we're understanding less and less about archaeology and history with more and more things being found. That's the problem 
I, I, we, 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 we're trying to produce a book on the archaeology and history of Barry at this minute, right? Um, and we basically said, no more. We're just doing what we've got because it keeps building and there's more questions and it keeps going in this direction. And we're thinking, if we go at this rate, we're never going to get it completed. That's the other thing with the ghost, ghost book. I don't like, no, no, most of you are not into ghosts. But I thought that if you keep putting stuff into something, you never ever get a conclusion. So what we're doing today is just to give you a bit of an overview for you to go away. You may never ever visit this site. You may never ever think about it again. But if anyone mentions it in a pub with you, Pete, you can give them a bit of information. So that's the main point. The, these, um, the area, and I've, I've got to throw this in there straight away. And this is going to come as a surprise. Uh, the, the, mo mo the monumental thing about this site is the actual backfilling of the site um, after the site um, was no longer being used, right? Because we're talking about millions of tons of material coming from over there, backfilling the site deliberately. That to me is, is, is more of an event than actually putting these stones up in the first place. And the reason why I'm saying that, huge movements of earth with, with, the, with the small finalities of moving that earth, millions of tons, um, it is, is as credibly um, as massive as a project as it is to actually erect these things in the first place. Quick timeline, get it in your minds quickly. Um, the site itself, the, you've got these beautifully carved upright stones. Then another period, you've got people putting stone walls in between these things and then another period they're backfilling end of site. The site itself dates back, now here we go, you, this is the possible context, the terminus antiquem date, the last possible use the site could have ever been used is roughly about 11,000 to about 12,000 years ago. The site itself may date from 14, 15, 16,000 years ago. May I be shot down by bolts from heaven for saying that, even saying that human beings had the ability to create temples even 12,000 years ago is blasphemy in archaeology, 14,000 years ago I deserve to die. The, f the point is, um, this period itself, let me give you an idea what was going on in this period, o most archaeologists will tell you 12,000 years ago that there were no settlements, nobody was living in houses, there was no agriculture, there was no animal husbandry, there was no ability to store anything, there, there was no pottery, um, the, the um, it, very small structures, there was no sat um, society, there were no sense of religion, there was absolutely nothing. And we still got this site. This is in Turkey, and we will go on to that in a short while. This is still the overview. And before um, we, before Ellen gets too upset, right, what I'm going to do, just for you guys, is actually show you where this site is. And it means stroke going through a load of slides, do, 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 until we get to the map. I want to do the map a bit further on because it was a bit of an enigma because, but one of you has asked, there is where Godep Itapi is, there. The three little dots. There it is. Um, this is the new country of Kurdistan, Syria, and you've got Turkey. So the, it's it's there, it's there, and it it wasn't. I need to stress so many different things over and over again. One thing I'm gonna stress is that this site did not exist up until 1995 in in the archaeological consciousness. It, it was not even on the radar. There, there's no way this could have ever existed. And suddenly they found it in 1995. And um, for, for credibility with what I'm doing today, this site is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. <coughs> to have that status, it's 101% bona fide. This is, this is in the category of the Nessa Brodger, Ring of Brodger, uh, the Silly Site, the Stonehenge, Hadrian's Wall. This is in that status, okay? All those sites are not fake, they're real, and all the rest of it. I'm going to keep saying that. There will be people today, either one of you in this room or this afternoon, they'll think that I've completely made this up. It's a lot more excellent than Alice Roberts was there. Well, Alice Roberts went there because she just wanted to show off her body. I just want to show off my knowledge. <laughs> well, that's showing off my knowledge on my body. Alice Roberts. 
Right. Oh, hell, Alice. Alice. <laughs> Alice. <laughs> You know what I'm going to do one day, right? I'm going to get, I'm going to get a gang of Bethany Hughes fans into the room, right, and they will tear you to pieces. You can have both, right? Well, can. <laughs> now, these upright stones are Gadepi Tepi themselves, um, and not just stones that are plain, right? Even themselves, even even as. Uh, representations of past society, um, the stones themselves, if they weren't carved, are amazing, right? Um, but there's carvings on them as well. Um, I've got lots of images. The, the, site, the, the site itself is vast. It's, it's an area of over 700 metres in length by about 300 odd metres in, in width. Um, and it's, it's a huge, it's sort of a huge tell it, it basically, there was a small hillock there and the different air, layers and layers built up above it, right, creating a tell about a 15 metre high mound. Um, and this site itself is so full of these upright monoliths, there's, there's thousands of them. The notes say there's hundreds, but there's thousands of them if you guesstimate the site. Archaeologists say they are definitely temple sites. Um, and then other archaeologists say, hang on a minute, you know, we can't really say that. And the ritualistic sites, well, you can't really have ritual if you've got no sense of society. You can't, if you don't, it, and then the whole sort of can of worms opens and you think, right, let's just, what I'm going to do is base this on the archaeology, actually, which I'm meant to be doing, rather than going off into all these blooming fantasies that most people do. Um, um, and what you can see here, this is an important point. Can you magnify I'm not going to, because I've got this a lot clearer coming up. It's a lot clearer coming up. This is just for another reason. This is coming up in a short while. Um, some archaeologists believe, right, that these things were placed into the ground, right, and, and these things showed above ground, and they supported a platform, and those were the temples, and then eventually all that was removed. Um, people dug down amongst the stones, um, put smaller, rough, really crude stones in between them, and a few generations after backfilled it all, right? The fact of the matter is these are, these are all different events. It's a bit like Stonehenge. Stonehenge itself is never to be seen as one moment in one period of time. What's going on at Gadeptep is, is basically um, a, a, a series of events, three key events. The putting of the stones, the, erec the erection of the stones, um, and then de-erection by basically putting stones, little stones around them so they're not really monoliths, and then backfilling. And we know they're backfilling approximately um, 11,500 years ago because... Um, they had to have backfilled because the stones are so well preserved and still standing. When archaeologists have excavated them, they've undermined the stones and they've had to put props around them. Right? So there's no way they could have stood up for any longer than a few, and other than a hundred odd years. Um, again, move on. And I'm going to share my notes with you as well today. So uh, this, this itself um, is one of the aerial views of Gadeptep. There, there are a number of aerial views of Gadeptep. And I know you want me to zoom in, but just to give you an idea, the, the, one, thing, the one thing that we're showing is concentric circles of these things with all these upright stones. Yes, they do come up clear. This is just, just, is just to give you a bit of an overview. And the stones that you're actually seeing dwarf the people who are actually standing uh, uh, in amongst them. Some of these stones can range up to 60 tonnes in weight. 60 tons in weight, so these would have had to have been brought to the site. And then when you think about the amount of earth needed to backfill. And the other thing as well is, you've got to think of the whole thing at Gideptep itself um, as being um, a, a random quantity of, of different events, i.e. whoever erected the stones were not the same people or had the same mindset as the people who put stones in amongst them to do something else. And then the people who backfilled them a lot of the same people who actually constructed them in the first place, because they can't be, because they're three separate, completely separate different things. It's a bit like, it's a bit like, um, Sto it's a bit like Hadrian's Wall. You have Hadrian's Wall um, as, as, a, as a frontier of some description, and then a few years later, you use it as a ski ramp. You know, this is and the, the people who sort of had those ideas are completely different, and completely different mindsets. And this is, this is what this site tells us, um, a different sense a different sense of ideology um, and we have to look at that and we've got to look at the little things and you build up your own minds on this 
um, because archaeology doesn't help very much on this one. Um, so I'm gonna, I think I'm going to keep that in the background. Um, you know, to, de to deal with everything this week with me, I I've been listening. I've been, I've been watching a complete series of Walking Dead. I love it. Um, oh, no, I don't want to. I don't want to tell you about the drag film I'm, I've got to do in the next few months. Um, that slipped. So Gadep, Gadep Tep itself is 15 miles um, from the site uh, from the city of San Lurfa in southeastern Turkey. Um, and again, it's a site in its own class, but a site that is in its own class as well are the likes of Stonehenge. There's nothing like Stonehenge. It's a site in its own class. And when people say, right, this site was constructed 12,000 years ago, 13,000 years ago, blah, 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 you start to think, hang on a minute, um, to have constructed this site in the first place, you must have um, earlier sites that led to this site's development. You just don't have these big stones coming out the, out, out of the sky, going into the ground, and people thought, that's what we're going to do next week. Right? This, is, this is the one question people are not asking about Stonehenge, is how suddenly we have Stonehenge and there's nothing else like it. There's no other example like Stonehenge in Britain. There's got to be other examples. You just can't just create things like that. You cannot go from walking down a street and creating a BMW Series 3 it just doesn't happen. You can't go from walking to building a car just like that. You've got to have these bits in between. You have to. Um, so the archaeologists working there, a, a certain professor, um, Klaus Schmidt, um, from 1995 for the German Archaeological uh, Institute. He got so obsessed with the site, he actually decided to live there um, not on the site, but um, a building nearby. And they've used all the techniques to um, try and understand the site. You've got um, thermal luminescence dating, give you an idea when the stones were last exposed to the environment. Uh, they, they've used radiocarbon dating, they've used all the geomagnetic surveys, they've used all these things. Uh, and archaeologists for such a long time, so we're talking about 1995, that's 25 years, of, give or take a year. An archaeologist, for, can you imagine an archaeologist saying, look what we've got, it's fake. It's a, it's a First World War air raid shelter. Um, it's, um, it's been put there by people in the Second World War and they've come up with all these different things. Um, and then slowly but surely they get dating evidence. Oh, but you're lying about your dating evidence and eventually it's proven what the site is. Something that's over 12,000 years old. I'm going to close my mouth because that's, that's as much as we can really um, come to. Um, so what we need to, lots of tourists have been there. And I think a site like this, you can't go around with a guide um, because it's not, you, 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 can see, you can see that there, a group of people there um, alongside. So what you have, you've got loads of these things, loads of them in, in concentric circles. And you've got another concentric circle going around the outside. And in the middle, this is gonna confuse things again. In the middle, what you do find is some whopper stones, big buggers, right? Um, and when you think about the, the weight of some of these stones, um, think about, and you can get an idea of the scale of the individuals associated with these stones, right? Um, think about 600 crushed, I'll start again, think about 100 crushed minis, 100 crushed minis in weight, representing one single megalithic stone in weight. This is how much these things weigh. This is how impressive these things are. And we're not going to go, oh, wow, how did they ever do it? Let's not be patronising. They did do it. They did achieve it. This isn't constructed by aliens or things that go bump in the night. Um, our ancestors did create this site. Um, when? That's the problem. Um, because archaeologists, and, and the thing is, you see, when they're excavating this site, you see this in a little bit more detail. You see really adv adv high advanced technology, these stones, and then somebody's put dry stone walling in, bet in between the, the stones, really crude dry stone walling, and then they backfill it all. Um, they found very little to no human remains. Uh, oh, yes, no pottery of any description. And then you think, um, how were they able to store things 
you want to create something like this, you need people, technology, society, agriculture, animal husbandry. You need all these different things. You need infrastructure. You need know-how. You need development. Um, and not to be able to store food is a big problem. But as Kathy and I felt, um, when we felt it, when we went into um, a shed at the University um, of the Highlands and Islands, lo and behold, in the tray was a load of gunk, wasn't it, Kathy? And that gunk itself turned out to be some of the earliest pottery ever found on Orkney, dating back to 6,000 years ago. It was gunk. It was, it was basically clay with just a few sort of lines on it, which was really difficult to make out. If, you'd have, if Kathy would have poured water on that tray there and then, right, it would have all gone back to clay and you would never have known it was pottery. The fact of the matter is, if you're producing stuff like that in the past, as we've proven with the likes of Orkney, they're producing that at Orkney about 6,000 years ago. This is 12,000 years ago. They must have had storage. You can't just um, store milk in, in, a, I mean, um, in a goat skin, for example. You can't just have stone containers or wooden containers. You must have had clay containers of some description to keep the seed. And you are allowed, Chris, to <laughs> ask the first question. I thought that they found big... Um, I don't know what they were made of, constructed of, but in the ground, and they tested the inside, and there was evidence in the first ruin. In the big vat. You remember that about yeah. the depth check. But that, that's brewing again. That's 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 another process. That is a complete that's not sort of every day everything else. Yeah, no, oh you brought something else to this today. I I didn't know about that element. Yeah. Didn't know about that one. That's good. So we've we've got the idea of brewing as well. But that still doesn't help us understand the storage of food. What I'm trying to say is that there's the ability, thank you for that very much, that you've got the ability to have clay itself um, that is baked out in the sun, it's fine. And you, you store grain in it, it's fine. But when water is added to it, it goes back to its natural quality. They are storing things, but we haven't got evidence of it. They must have stored things. They must have produced things, and you've just given an example of that. Are you definitely sure that was good depth tech? I'm sure it was. Okay, I'm go yeah, I'll go with that. 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 I think it was made of... I can't remember. I can't remember. Exactly. No, well, no, they actually showed. They actually showed a picture of it. Yeah. So the big brewing vats in the ground. That's something else as well. That's something else. That's two areas. So so this is this is great stuff. But we've added something to it already, but it still doesn't help us any further. This is the point with this site. There is so many enigmas with it. Um, carry on. Let's carry on. Da -da 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 right, here we go. I need to get to my... What I'm going to do, I'm going to bring you to a link. Oh, look at those there. I'll just get to my notes on this one. I, I think. But if they brew it underground, what, yeah. in the soil? Dug into the soil, yeah. The, the thing, the point we're, we're point we're making is when we have an absence of evidence, it doesn't mean to say that they didn't use it. They must. The point is they must have used things to store grain. They ha they would have had to have. They would have had to have stored it. Just because we don't find the evidence, they would have had to have stored things to keep people fed at these sites, building these things. For example, when we get the likes of the Great Pyramids, um, for many, many years, uh, we were all told in school that Great Pyramids were constructed using a slave workforce. They would get vast numbers of people to move blocks, they would drop dead, and then they would get other people in to move more blocks. That's what we are told at school, because they didn't find the settlements, they didn't find the storage areas and all the rest of it. And then suddenly, bang, they, they find the, the little settlements that were associated with the people who were in the service of the pharaoh to actually construct the great pyramids in the first place. The, the evidence is out. Do you know, they, 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 the archaeologists are so confused about the depth tap because they haven't found any settlements associated with it. They're thinking, if they haven't found any settlements with it, um, it must be this and it must be that. If you look a bit further, you'll probably find the settlements. Um, lots of it, the, these stones themselves, 
are in excess of six metres in height. Kathy's been with me and maybe one or two other people. When you go to places like Avebury, you look at one of the megalithic stones at Avebury, they're up to 100 tonnes in weight. Huge things, massive things. Think about the stone at Tinkerswood Burial Chamber being 45 tonnes in weight. Uh, the ones at um, Avebury dwarf that one. They, they're, they're, they're colossal, huge things, right? That's, a, that's, that's an achievement in itself, yeah? It is an achievement in itself. But an even a bigger achievement is to dress these stones, prepare these stones, move these stones, erect these stones, and then we come up with a dead. A, a, a place that we don't really understand what's going on. Now, Kathy was, uh, Kathy, why is it always you? You're always with me, my left-hand woman. Um, when, when, when there was two people laying on a, on a stone at um, the Ring of Stennis, um, we had me and Kathy with two others listening to um, Martin Carruthers tell us that they believe that the stones at Stennis um, might represent individuals, um, or each of the stones represents an individual family. Um, and these stones may represent individuals. There's one problem with these stones. When they're freestanding, even with a bit of bog standard rubble around the base, they, they are really, really vulnerable. And very few of them have any, show any signs of collapse. But when the archaeologists have excavated them, they start to um, collapse. They, they, they start to subside. That means that there was some technology in place when they erected to keep them upright. There's, some, there's something missing. We talked about storage containers. There's something missing that kept these things up. Bog standard earth is not going to keep these things directly vertical. Look at them. They're vertical. They're not like this. They're vertical. Stonehenge itself, uh, when you look at Stonehenge, there's, there's been serious subsidence with the stones at Stonehenge. Okay? Um, in the 1958, I had to re-erect one or two of them. They had to sort of put, put a, a digger up against one or two, sort of realign some of the stone that's, the stones at Stonehenge. Um, and the stones at Stonehenge have only been standing four and a half thousand years. But the difference is the stones at Stonehenge have been exposed. These things were buried. That is the difference. Um, some people, um, some of the stones as will come on actually show carvings on them. Beautiful carvings on them. We, 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 what we looked at the other week when we looked at Malta, we looked at the pecked designs that they used at Malta. Pecking of the stones, you can see there, you can see there, that's on the tops of the stones themselves. Um, on, the, on the faces of the stones in Malta, they're pecked on the side and not on the top. Every single example. These are pecked on the top, which would not technically be seen by anybody. But after they erected these things, um, they, they compacted them, maybe, yeah? And, and then there was a platform on the top that added to some sense of stability. Maybe there was clay here, and there was a beam on top that added to some kind of stability. However, um, a few years later, they removed anything that was there, removed it all, and then put stone in amongst the walls, and within a generation again, before these started to show any signs of subsidence, they backfilled them. Very few have actually collapsed in any way. It's really queer, completely. There's carvings of animals on them. Oh, and when you go to this one, most of the carvings are on the shaft here. This is all one stone. The carvings are here on this bit. There's some on the top, but most of them are here. And when you say, some, when you say this to somebody, you say, actually, the carvings here, if the original purpose of these was to actually put them in soil up to that level and to have some kind of structure on the top, um, and people say, oh, why would they go through all the effort of carving things when, um, when they're not going to be seen? And I go through a huge diatribe. Well, you look at burial chambers where you have a carving on a burial chamber, and, the bur and instead of the, as you're going down the passage, you can see the carving, the, the carving is actually facing into the earth. Um, a good, another example, an ancient Egyptian tomb. Um, it was meant for the pharaoh's eyes after it had been painted and nobody was ever meant to see it again. Why would you go through all that effort? But you did, you did. And they went through this effort as well. The fact of the matter is, um, very little of what I can come up with a theory um, 
can find any weight because the archaeology has been, any evidence has been destroyed. They haven't found any of these in their original state. They, all the stuff has been removed, um, categorically removed. Whatever was responsible for creating these things was organised um, and everything happened. Basically, the people who created these were on an organisation level of the people who created Hadrian's Wall. And what did people need when they created Hadrian's Wall? Infrastructure, food, they, they needed supplies. This is what this is. This, this is. this is on that level. And I'm not, I'm not going to say the military built this or weird little things. Um, and I had this one guy in my class on Tuesday saying, oh, th these cannot be 12,000 years old. Oh, they, there's no way they are. They've got to be something to do with the First World War. I said, all right then. If that's the case, right? Why is there no nothing from that period? In fact, there is nothing buried in amongst these walls after 11 and a half, 11,000 years ago. Everything in amongst these walls is before that date. <coughs> is, bef uh, is very much before that date. And the word is the terminus antiquem date. It's all before that date. Moving on. The Keep going, Kathy. No, that's it. Go on. Sandstone, local sandstone. Sandstone. Yes. yes. It's it, it's sandstone. It's sandstone. It's sandstone. Look at that. It's sandstone. Ah, uh, no. Think. Yeah, I, I mentioned. I'll, I'll put an idea in there. It's pecked out like the stone. The thing is, right, with these with these types of stones themselves. Right. If you know anything about sandstone, it erodes quickly. Yeah. Oh, don't don't get a smart, Alec. You're dead right about Corella. Corella sandstone. Corella sandstone. Corella sandstone is really, really soft. No, Corella, Corella sandstone. Yeah, but your point's right. Your point is really, really right. Exactly. 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 Anyway, oh, but they still exist. I'll be back now. Um, anyway, thanks for dropping A lot of things are mentioned. Yeah. We don't know how to spell them or, or no. the names. Yeah. Yeah. The people like you, like me, just like the writing down. Yeah. Yeah. Geppy Teppy. Yeah. 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 I can't remember the last place. No. It begins with a G. It begins with a G. Oh, right. G P I. Anyway, back to it. Finish up the name of it so we can write it down. Dennis needs to write it down. He can write the spell. Dennis can't spell it. Well, okay, here we go. The spelling, folks. Is there it is. There. Go back and go go back with Tappy. Go back with Tappy. That's German. That what? What? Because it's got an umlaut. What? The We 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 do not anymore. Good. Good. Well, it is a it is a German archaeological site after all. You know. There you go. It, it, it's yeah. Anyway, moving on. But Germany, right? Oh, Dennis, hurry up! He's only got half of it. Oh, for God's sake, Dennis! Too quick. 
Come on, Dan. Get it down quickly. Oh. Yeah. Spill it out for him. Back is really happy. Now, G O B E K L I T E P E. P E. Two little dots above the O. Two little dots and two little boys. You got it. You can't sing that. No. Go Becky. Go Becky. Tap it. Now look at that there. Yeah, see, this is for Chris, right? She's given all the right reactions, right? I am pleased. Right, that's good. Um, stop looking at my diary. I don't want you looking at what I'm doing tomorrow. Oh, I know your secrets now. So, folks, 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 folks. Good, 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 good. Um, now, as, as you can see, the, 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 interest, the interesting thing that you see about this is now we've introduced um, a carving on stone, right? Now, this is in low relief, and you've also got high relief carvings. And we'll explain that in a minute. If you've got incised carvings, there are three different forms of carvings wi within this set of monuments. <coughs> I've got to say this as well, and I, and I keep stressing things. Um, the one thing about this, this landscape of archaeology is that it was only being utilised for a very short period of time. We got radiocarbon dates telling us that something was going on intensely at the site for about 150 odd years, and that's it. From from the phases, that's it. There's, and and then, then they backfill. And and the point you can see it all on here, right? The thing about backfilling, right, is that you can tell if if there's if there's a hundred of these circular things, right, and they're backfilling the lot within a period of time, there has to be a reason why they're doing it, right? You know, it's it's a hell of a lot of effort to backfill. Um, I don't I don't know if any of you have, um, you know, you, you digging out a hole out the ground, um, and then you've got to backfill it, right? It's still a hassle um, to move. To dig out, to have a hole in the ground, and then to go all the way over there and bring soil is a hell of a lot of hassle. And then realise that you've got a, there's a lot of area to fill in. There's a lot of soil. You can tell the amount of area there um, that they're back filling. Um, so the so you're looking at that. I think I'm gonna have to guess on this one. Maybe that's about um, five five meters exposed. Maybe about about another meter there. Say that's four meters. You've got another meter and a half up there. You, you give volume and the amount of soil, and this was deliberate. So the, these, so first phase again, these upright stones, and then what they've done, they, they filled it, they, they, they've erected these things, and either they were freestanding, which is not possible <laughs> um, due to gravity, uh, they must have been, they must have put holes in the ground and then put them in the holes, and then removed all the soil, and then put walls in between them. And then backfilled. This is just. Um, but back to this. Back to this beast here. Um, you can see that it, it looks like a wolf-like beast. Now, one thing I got really excited about um, when we when we look at all the pictures of the animals, I got really excited, and I actually thought, right, folks, forget everything that I've just said. And then I said. If you look at all the animals, the animals will represent um, the fauna of the landscape, of the landscape the people are living in, which will give you clues to who these people are. Not their belief structures, but what their environment was like. We see the odd carving of a scorpion, we see the carving of a lion, we see carvings of ducks, we, we see um, other carvings, we see carvings of people as well. All these aid us more to understanding the site um, than the archaeologists come up with wonderful theories that this is about religion and all the rest of it. If it's about religion, right, no idea what it means. Um, but there's one thing I've got to say again. When these stones are taken to the site, remember, remember, they would have had to have been brought to the site. There's a hill, right? Stones are brought from over there, wherever over there is, brought in a roughly hewn state. Um, 
everything's being carved out. And then, the, this is a flush surface. And then, within that flush surface, they've got to remove all that stone there to reveal this one beast. So that itself is a hell of a lot more work. The, 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 the work on the stone is a lot of work. But then to actually create a beast on them is a hell of a lot more work. And there's another thing as well is, this work must have been done on site. It's very difficult to move a stone with a carving on it. Particularly carvings that are in high relief that we'll see in a short while. No metal then, are you, would that? No. Why do you have to spoil it for? <laughs> That one there, if I go to my, my notes here, which are in front of me. Um, yeah. um, what, you, what you do find is you can see some other slight carvings there. Now this is the point, this is the point. The stone that we just seen, uh, uh, see, there's sh no signs of erosion on, the, on them at all. Some stones were obviously exposed for longer. You can see whatever designs there have eroded away. Do you know what, Mike? This is probably... You mentioned Corella sandstone in the right context. The Corella quarries themselves were in operation in about the 1850s, right? Um, most of the fine carved stone on the outside of Bridgend train station was used, um, used Corella sandstone. Within decades, the Corella sandstone started to fault has started to peel off the walls. There's basically no Corella sandstone on the outside of Bridgend train station now. That is, um, I think, um, Bridgend train station was built in 1846 or something, or whenever it was built. That's probably completely wrong. Whenever it was built, within 150 odd years, uh, the Corella sandstone has completely failed. And can you imagine? That's 150 years. This is 12,000 years ago, right? There'd be nothing left of these stones. There would be nothing left of them at all if they had left, been left outside. So, they def so th this is probably erosion within a few decades, and then it was covered up. Um, you can see another beast there that looks like a fox. On, the, on, these, on these stones, you've got, um, you've, got a fo you've got a number of foxes, snakes. These are the ones they've actually excavated. They've only excavated about... 5% of the site. Wild boars, cranes, wild ducks, um, all these different things, lots of other beasts. Um, so obviously they've got to carve these on the flats. You do not carve anything on the vertical. You just, you, you know, in this level. I know, I know you think, you know, he's wrong. You, you, you've you got to have a, a statue uh, and then you carve it and all the rest of it, right? But if you carve something on the vertical like this, every blow you're going to risk the thing being knocked over. So you, you'd have had to have had them on the flat. It's just logical sense. You're not carving into a David, for example. Um, then again, um, and then there's this, you've got three-dimensional, not two-dimensional images, but three-dimensional images of lions that look nothing like anything that you would find in Europe at that time or anything that you'd find in Europe for, for the next 6,000 years. Or anywhere else on the planet. Now the thing is, what we don't know, we, we just this this is this is like somebody going to ancient Egypt and suddenly saying, "Wow, look at the pyramids! We've just found them." And in fact, um, the likes of Champollion and the likes of Napoleon and all those people uh, that were going into Egypt um, in the late 1700s, 1800s. Um, and Balzoni and all these people, lots of stuff that they were seeing had never been seen for hundreds and maybe a thousand plus years. And they were obviously there, but nobody had gone to see them. This stuff is buried, and, and it's almost as if we're on a new frontier. The problem is, if I had my own way, I would, um, I, I would go back to year one, right? Uh, to have computer technology is extremely divisive in academia. Uh, the problem is when people write something down, it can be copied by somebody else. Nobody can actually get have anything peer read. Everything's going wrong in academia. Uh, and then when you look at something like this, people can say, oh, it's faked. You, know, you can really slag it off on the internet without any academic bearing, right? 
but the real information is actually being found in the ground. This is real archaeology. This is there. Oh, I've, I've completely ignored what we've got behind us. Uh, there's very strange creatures on here. Um, we're going to enlarge this just for Kathy because she is, you know, her, her eyesight's going a little bit. Uh, these little things here, what do they look like to you? Camels. Llamas. Bingo, llamas or camels, exactly. Um, these look very, very strange creatures. Very, very strange. Now, the desk, domestic, forget about llamas, they're from Peru, but it looks like a bit like a llama. Um, yeah, the domestication of the camel didn't occur for a few thousand years. But if these, if these are meant to be camels, they're there, incised in the rock. And that's the top bit of the rock. That's not the rest of it, that's the top bit. Uh, this is... They look as if they're running. Yeah. Do you know... Uh, But again, Kathy, hang on, hang on, stop a minute, stop a minute. The point is, to be able to create something like this, you would have had to have domestication of animals. You'd have had to have. I do. But anyway, maybe you don't. They could be sheep. They could be goats. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not completely dismissing what you're saying, Kathy. I'm just trying to flow. Um, you, you, they, would have, they would have had to have been... You, you, you can't just go out... What I'm saying, Kathy, is this, right? You can't go out hunting for berries and, and expect these things to be constructed. It's not going to happen. Unless you know a way, Kathy, right? Tell me, because I don't. Um, you can't do anything like... You're not going to get enough food to keep these people going. Now, there, there you go. Can you see that little beast there? That's in relief. I'm not, not, do, not doing it yet, it's, but it's in relief, right? The only way you could have carved that on that stone is if the stone was there and just moved the thing in place, yeah? This is in relief. The design of this does not look European. It looks very Central American about a thousand, thousand five, two thousand years ago. Um, the design of this is nothing that I, I can sort of give a, a, an equivalent for in Europe for a few more thousand years, quite some time. Um, anything like this, we're going to have a look at, we're going to look at this in a short while. Um, but you can see what I'm saying. Look, look how perfect that is. It, it's just, it's bellissimo. It's perfectly, it, it's, I know there's a, there's a like, like bit of geology there, but it's, it's perfect. It's a, and they put this crappy stone in amongst it. Um, move it on. Where's my little thing? Where's my thingy gone? I'll bring back later, I say. It works better when Lynn's in the room. Hang on a minute, I know you want your fag. No, you know, right, I've got to say, anyone want any eggs? And what I'm going to do, before we have a, a break, I need to talk about something. Look at that. Now, Um, I, I, look, he needs to be right now and again. I knew that, but he didn't. He don't know. Right, that, that there's a lion. Yeah? That, that there is a lion. And, and you're looking at that and you're thinking, right, what type, when, I, I give, I've told you what I think. What culture, have you, any of you seen anything like this from whatever culture in the world? Just spit it out. Yeah, go on. As, oh, go on. Yeah, yeah, right, okay. This, we know that this, the terminus, um, the terminus antiquum for this is 11,500 years ago. That's, that's the maximum, that, that, that's the earliest point, that's the latest point this could, the latest point this could have been carved. Because there was soil backfilled around this, which has been radiocarbon dated from 11,500 years ago. This had to have been carved before that. Um, and this, this itself looks like nothing that, that I can ever, this looks like nothing that I've ever seen from 12,000 years ago, 11,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago, 8,000 years ago on this planet. This is so advanced. This is so amazing. This is, this is a new frontier. Yeah. Uh, on that note, what we're going to do, um, we're going to give you, there it is. And we're going to, there it is. Look at that. 
Look at look at that there. Um, the beast, the lions, high relief, low relief. High and the, the amount of work to, to 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 create something like this. Let's let's get a bit of level on this. To create something like that, all that stone around it has to be removed to reveal that one single, only alone creature along a low relief design. The amount of work just to form that. Just to have that there, everything has to, else has to go. And what we're going to do now, you can all blooming go and have a drink and whatever. What I'd like to say, um, I've got loads of eggs today, including duck eggs. Six, um, 12 duck eggs. Loads of chicken eggs. Anyone want to go on to any of the events, let me know. I have got a serious problem with Sunday, right? Is anyone coming on Sunday? We just, what Sunday is the Sunday. islands of the Bristol it's Channel St. Nicholas Community Hall. Anyone interested in that? Well, let me know as you go along. Okay, take it, take it, take it, do that. I, 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 I think Kathy's in a moaning mood. There's new people who should get together because he's given us all talks. Yeah. Um, so there you go. So, 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 um, so Lynn doesn't feel left out today, right? We've got to make sure that Lynn is felt loved when she's not here every time. Right, so, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to, but we, we're going to put that in the background again. There he is. And I could do a little bit of spiel. Right, so let me get to my doodah. <coughs> so, so, in a word, what we're seeing leaves us scratching our heads. Um, but the accomplishment goes without any bounds. This, this is an amazing feat, however way you look at it. And my notes, I will repeat, with no signs of any settlement, any sense of any society, there's no evidence of any farming. We think uh, there's only evidence of hunter-gatherer societies. There's no level of any sign of complexity. But without any of that, <coughs> none of this could have been completed. There must have been farming to do this. There must have been society. But we've got the dates wrong. We don't see the sense of the fertile crescent coming for another 2,000 years. We don't see... Kathy, Kathy, yeah, that's right. What you're saying is right, but the dates are wrong. We had no idea that all this all this started earlier. Well, we thought it all didn't. started later. It must have started earlier. But if they were brewing, they had to grow grain to, mm -hmm. to yeah. agriculture. So you can't, but, but can't, oh my god, I knew there was going to be one, and why is it you? Right, 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 Kath, Kath, right, Kath, yeah? Kathy, oi, Kath, let's go, Alan, right? Yeah. Could a load of farmers have built Hadrian's Wall? Right, could a load of people who haven't even farmed construct Hadrian's Wall? Yeah. But why do they? Um, the, 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 the fact of the matter is, this is high technology, okay? This must have been built by people who were organised. It must have been. You, you know, there's so, there's so much going into understanding this la landscape. Okay, Gobekli Tepe basically means pot belly hill. And in fact, it's not a German word, it's a Turkish word. It is an, um, and the site itself, I've told you, is just over 700 metres in length and 300 metres wide. So if anyone stood on the train station platform in Cardiff, right, mm -hmm. if, you, if you keep walking off the end of the train station platform and go another 100 metres, that gives you the width of the landscape that this stuff is built on. It's huge. Um, being a, um, seven, uh, 760 metres um, in, in, in length, uh, this this site itself um, um, is is 
is the equivalent of uh, the site is in length of half half, um, half a mile basically. The tell itself, we can call it a tell. Um, what's going on on the site? The layers after the these pillars are buried. There's a bit of occupation, and then forever, nothing's going on at the tell. So even future generations haven't mucked around with what's below. Um, it's 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 very intriguing because what usually happens with a site like this is a, is is if we look at uh, somewhere like Troy, the, you've got Troy one, Troy two, Troy three. You've got various phases of Troy, right? And people keep building at that site for generations after generations. For whatever reason, people were only at Gobepi Tepe for a, a relatively short time in history. So, um, 150 years um, is not a long time for a civilization to have existed and, and declined. It, 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 th there's those questions. Um, oh, we agree. Um, yeah. Culture. But we, we do we do we, we do right we do you two before you start fighting right um, to to have the evidence of brewing um, you you cannot have that level of evidence of brewing from natural wheats so but we we, we could actually should we meet should we meet should should we um, should we meet in the middle right. Should we meet in the middle, right? We had farming, but no animals were, were being, there was no animal husbandry. We were able to evolve different crops. The fact of the matter is we're picking at straws, to be honest with you. They knew that if they shoved a few hazelnuts in the hedge, they'd have more hazel trees and they could pick more. Yeah, but this... And all. But Cathy, this is, this is a huge undertaking. You can't feed people from nuts. Right, no more, Kathy. I know you're not going to be bought over. But there's, 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 one, there's, one, thing I want, there's one thing that I want to um, say is that we've got radial carbon dates. Um, what they've done with the radial carbon dates yeah. is that they've, 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 yeah, excavated, they've excavated the fill, which, which is all the stuff that's been placed into the, the areas that go Gepi Tepe. And they've, they've, what they've done is said, right, we'll go with this radial carbon date at the lowest level, level, just before it hits the floor and these huge pits alongside these huge uh, monoliths. We'll, we'll get those dates, mm. and they've, they've taken that date, they take no dates from hole after hole and after hole. And we've got a mean, we've started to get sort of mean averages of when things were going on at the site and when things were finishing at the site. Um, and we, we, know, we know, for example, the dates that I've got here um, somewhere around um, the year um, 8,967 BC, which is 11,967 uh, BC, the site was being backfilled. So those are quite precise dates across the landscape. Go for it. Oh, now you have completely, right, no you haven't, right, because you've actually, you've actually put, added another complication on. Uh, Ellen, don't say any more because you've added another complication, it's a very logical complication, right? You are right, all this material has come from somewhere else. Um, so, so that stuff, that stuff itself, um, that, that, that stuff itself, uh, has got a mixture of various different carbon dates and so on um, that may be from um, a much later time period okay and they've been swept all together and dumped into the site and given a much earlier date from from what we're finding uh, but it's quite consistent across what we're seeing it's, it's really quite consistent about what we're seeing with Godepi Tep um, 
We're going to move away from that now, but you are really right. I'm, I'm, I'm valuing all these, these points that people make. So basically all the stuff that was dumped in there was quite old before it was already dumped in there. That's a really good point. But because that's consistent across all these areas they're excavating, we know, for example, the site is being backfilled around 11,000 years ago. You can see this here. You, 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 you're, you're right to have your scepticism. You can see these uprights here. And what you can see is that with this great architecture, sooner or later, the backfilling between these stones um, cruder levels of technology, which tell us that these stones predate these walls. And what they're then doing, interesting point, they're then demolishing some of these walls to try and get dates for when these walls were constructed, because that information is going to be sealed as well to give you radiocarbon dates. They've actually done that as well, all telling us that stuff is going on there beyond 11,000 years ago. That's the terminus antiquem idea when the site was being used. Moving on again, let's try and get a bit more sense. Let, let's move us away. I Go think on. they backfilled it because they realised they're not standing up properly and, and they're going to fall over if they don't. And, they're gonna, and then the ones that are worn, the ones that are such a the level, they thought, oh dear, we haven't done this right. Whatever. But Cathy, Cathy you're, making a great, you're making a great point there, right? Everybody, Cathy's made a great point, yeah? But you know what? There's a curveball in there straight away, Cathy. I, I love that point. It's a great point, yeah? 150 years is a long time, yeah? In 150 years, Britain ruled the sea. Britain now is a small, little, tiny little island with no influence on the planet at all, right? So this is where we've come in 150 years. This is not a Brexit speech, but what I'm trying to say, our interpretation of who we are and what we feel is special to us has completely changed. 150 years ago, most people used to go to church in Britain, okay? Um, most people used to all wear black at a funeral. I wore, I wore purple and, and pink at my nan's funeral, and so did Michelle, okay? And most people wore black, but my mum wore purple as well. You, 150 years ago, we'd, we'd have all been burnt at the stake as witches for wearing purple at a funeral. What I'm trying to say is, within 150 years, and in 100, 150 years ago, right, nobody could drive a car. Cars didn't exist. In fact, 150 years ago, there was no railway here as well. There was no buses. There was no transport really in this area at all, except horses and carts and all the rest of it. 150 years, huge, huge changes. So in the past, what we thought was important 150 years ago has completely changed today. Your point is a really good point, Cathy, but they're not going to be the same people. They're not going to be thinking the same. They're not going to want to preserve these monuments because somebody 150 years ago felt them as precious. For example, our, our cemeteries are not... It doesn't sound like I'm getting at any... How many of you actually visit your loved ones in a cemetery in a cemetery? Right? Whether you do or you don't, not really interested. But the fact of the matter is... What you thought you were going to do a few years ago was completely changed. And I know I'm upset, Gelf, because he was just about to go anyway. Um, so things have completely Here's changed. It's been next week, folks. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Gelf. Are you okay? Yeah. Have you, have you got something out?
him in the Exodus, then. Eh? Right, so. So anyway, hopefully that hopefully we've had I've had a bit of a um, we've all had a bit of a break then, which was great without any more controversy. Goff really liked that, and the point I made to Goff when I went out then was that um, I wasn't hoping this was going to be a subject that any of you um, knew anything about. Even if it was a subject, none of you knew anything about. You would have sooner or later seen that there were faults in some of the things that were saying. So this is why we've done this as a really in an honest way today. Um, now, if we if we look at something like that, actually the architecture and the carvings on these stones start to get better and better. Look at that prancing lion. Um, it's got and actually the carvings moved up the stone as well. And the strange thing is that that looks that looks better dressed than it does down below. Uh, but but there's no evidence of any, many falling over. That's the point. That is the point. And you can't carve this. You can't carve this after the stone's been erected. That is the point. The um, it just doesn't happen. Um, you you I, I think before Goth said he had to go. Um, I think I think the overall thing was um, that the people who built these put these up in the first place have got a completely different mindset than people who backfilled 150 years ago. The, the, the infrastructure to backfilling this 150 years later was absolutely phenomenal, a hugely phenomenal. And, and, it, and it, it's, almost as if, it's almost as if somebody says to me, right, um, by the way, um, I, I want you to uh, move all the soil from your garden into my garden tomorrow um, and not give me a reason, right? So I've got to spend all night doing all this, moving the soil, right? It's, it's, it's caused me a lot of stress and hassle, and there's some there's some meaning to it. I don't really understand why. Well, we rebuilt it to preserve them. I can't think why they. Why why would they want to preserve it? Because the idea of. Because there's more effort to knock it down, so that's a shovel. Isn't it? But the, oh, look, look look at this as as we look down, we can sort of give. Well, as they're excavating these areas, they've got new areas, that, and and actually the shape of these. When it says these are these are concentric circles, they're not. They're, they're, they're in a, a set of circles here. In your notes, right, in my notes, it said, um, it said there was, um, across the site, there, there was like 20 of these circles, and there was like 200 megalithic stones, right? And, and I started to think, actually, here, you've got 32 stones in just this one circle, so the mass didn't, doesn't even stand up. All of these represent about 100 stones alone, and there's one, two, three, four circles represented. So there must be thousands of these of these megalithic stones across the site. Absolutely phenomenal. And and again, what and you can see the the archaeologists after they've excavated them, um, they're having to support them. Go go for it. Go, go for it quick. If, if the rough circular walls were put up and they're going to be buried, you wouldn't spend too much time doing posh good stonework. And, the, and that even complicates it even further. That, but and there's another thing as well is right. You you've hit upon you've hit upon something really queer, right? And I'm going to use the queer in completely. Uh, look at that. Every single one of these right has no access in from the side. The only way in is from above. Always aliens. <laughs> There's always one. There, there's no entrance of doorways or absolutely anything with these. Um, and and look, look, at these, look at these sets of carvings. Uh, you've got, it looks like a domesticated cow. Um, you've, got, you've got what looks like some kind of um, curlew type bird. Uh, you've got a fox. You've got um, a duck. You've got various duck-like animals, um, it might be an ibis, and you've got a scorpion. Is it a human with those there, top left, with the ball in the front? The, these are all human. No, no, stand again, these are all animals, these are all animals, these are birds. These are birds. Yeah, we, we, we've got this little duckling now, he, he, he's, he's really cute, right? Looks, got human characteristics, we're obviously a duck, but the, these, these are all animal characteristics on these, and you can see that these have carvings below the level, and these have carvings above the level. Why um, do you think it's on the top, Carl? 
To be honest with you, I wish you hadn't asked that because I've got no idea of an interpretation on that at all. No idea at all. Oh, water, um, it's a water carrier. carrier. Nice. It, could, it could be a water carrier. It could carrier. be a carrier. <laughs> if they're brilliant. Yeah. If, if there's ducks and things there. And indicating water, and water yes, water. yes. This is what I mean. By looking at the um, fauna around, um, you can get a good idea what the landscape was like. And obviously, the ducks need to be next door to water. So we've got evidence of fresh water there. Um, um, so, again, move on. So were the walls actually put in to hold the stones up? Uh, to, to, a, actually, Cathy, actually, Cathy, structurally, looking engineering-wise, the walls wouldn't support jack. They're really poor quality. Yeah, it, 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 not as badly. Pardon? Not when it's filled in with rubble from the field. But, but, but the walls themselves are specifically put in between. That's the point. They're not set backfill. So you've got three phases. The stones themselves, the walls in between, and then the backfill. Or, or maybe the wall, that stage, is exactly the same stage as the backfill. Which, which would make a lot more sense because, because there's, no, there's no utilitarian use with a structure like this if you can't get into it from the side. Yeah, because that's two steps, isn't it? You have to look at the other land and then you've got three sort of punches to your end before you hit the sand. Yeah. So, no evidence. No. So, they ate the bones. <laughs> <laughs> There is also portable art. There, there is also portable art. Uh, basically, what we're seeing, if you could see, there's a little baby, baby there with little hands and stuff, and there's a little snake there on that one. These are all carved out of stone. Uh, obviously, there's no ceramic, so there's uh, evidence of it. There's somebody, there's somebody's face there with 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 arms coming in there. That's the other side. The same piece, but three different angles. The size on that. Um, Oh, there is a size, yeah. So um, if we, we're going to have to uh, presume that that's either um, that's going to be centimeters. So this is um, that's going to be ten. This is about twenty centimeters in length, carved out stuff. Okay, we, we've got we've got about five or six minutes left. So so we look at that one. That's the one you saw earlier on. But when they actually dug down, you got a boar. Yeah. You got a wild boar. And and there's another ball there. And actually, there's also holes drilled through some of these. There's one or two that you can actually see through because there's holes drilled through, which makes it even more complicated. This, this is, that's in light relief, that's incised. Um, and again, look at that there as a, now, now when, when, when these, what's happening is that there's a, there's a great debate between the archaeologists um, and sort of, I don't know, people who, what, what some people are saying is saying, why are archaeologists putting a cover over these things, right, um, and protecting them from the elements? Why can't we see them as they were meant to be seen? The answer is they, they weren't meant to be seen like that in the first place, simply because if they were, there would be nothing left of them in the, there. So the archaeologists are excavating them, supporting them, um, protecting them. Um, I think they did put the Chinese in and put them on those giant things. Oh, do you know what? I hope so. Yeah. I, the, the, Chinese, the Chinese are so superior in, in displaying their past than we are. Um, they, you know, they, they build huge domes over the stuff. Um, oh, and there, there it is now, what they're doing. They're, they've now got a cover over it, so a proper walkway. So, so they're, they're continually wor working on this stuff. But again, it's, it's structurally dangerous for archaeologists to work there as well. Um, so as, as they're excavating, they're supporting these things. And, and I've got no parallels for any of this because we've got no other evidence for any of this at this period anywhere on the planet. But again, you might think, oh my God, we didn't really get many answers today. But look at this. There's one or two. Now, okay. What, do, what culture on the planet does this look like to you guys? You, you there? Give me, just give me the one. No, give me the one from South America. No, they're from the middle, Inca. That looks like Incan carving. But the, the Incans didn't come along for another... Um, 
11, well, 10,500 years. Um, and they're, they're carving this, um, and they're, they're, this is portraying individuals, individual figures. Um, and over there you've got a stone that's got a, a snake carving to it. These are actually showing individual figures. Again, um, what this, this, is, this is a slide taken before the one we've seen earlier because what they're doing, um, they're, they've now got that domed over with the image that we've seen, a slight dome, not the ones in China, right? But maybe they're gonna go that way. The thing is, this is a major tourist attraction now. Um, and what, they, what they've got to do with this major tourist attraction is, is milk and bleed as much money as they can out of the tourists. Because the way I look at it is this, if, if somebody's going on a holiday and they want to go and see this, they will pay the money to see it. We're not forcing them to see it. So if they pay £30 a time to see this, and you've got, you, you've got millions of visitors, you can create a dome over the whole thing and pay for the excavation forever. And I, I, I would say that's justifiable. To protect the archaeology for, for people to see, for future generations, people need to pay. I'd, I'd pay £100 to see that, easy, because it, it's, you're going all that way, right? And I would want my money used in particular, and that's where they're going with it. And the Chinese learnt that many years ago. Fortunately, the Italians haven't even thought about doing that with Pompeii, and Pompeii's becoming too late. Um, what we're going to do, we've got some more stuff there, but we're not going to do that. So, um, I've left a few images to the end. They're nothing to do with what... But what I was saying, with, with Orkney, for example, we've got this very crude pottery on Orkney. And what I was saying, with it, it's, it's so crude that you start adding liquid to it, it melts away into nothing. Very similar as pottery. I know this is arts and crafts, but if you put this outside uh, in the sun and you add water to it, it'll go back to clay. This is what we're saying. They, they may have had pottery, but not the pottery that lasted the ages. But we're finding evidence of pottery like that, that that's obviously modern, like this, that have lasted in other periods of the, parts of the world. We're looking at this. Um, this is from the um, Ring of Stennis, um, uh, near the Ring of Brodga. The archaeologists think these upright stones are that, that are equally colossal to the ones that we're seeing at um, Gobek Gapi Tepe. Uh, these are seen to represent individuals, and why can't the ones at Gadepi Tepe represent individuals? But then why would they have gone through all the effort of doing that in the first place? Um, and again, if you compare, what we're going to do, we're going to do a bit of a comparison, right? So we're going to put, oh God, there's my camera. Right, um, so if we, um, if we have that there, um, and I bring in another image, let me have this and you can you can see the point I'm trying to make if I can get back there and bear with me we're nearly finished right here we go could put that up there and move this along and if we sort of put the longs the, the two alongside each other right that here is 12,000 years ago and that here is 4,500 years ago. What is the most impressive? Stonehenge or Gadepi Tepe? Mm. Pete, Chris, Keith? Gadepi Tepe is much more sophisticated, isn't it? Right, you, you, right, I want somebody else to say something else, not those same words, but you, yeah. Wait, um, Ellen? Carvings, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, let's have some other words, Kathy. Well, we've got the carvings. And they're both Stonehenge, man, is it? There's no comparison. Stonehenge. There's no comparison. Uh, but we've got the car we've got the good carvings at Gadepi Tepe. We've got no carvings like this at Stonehenge. All they're doing at Stonehenge is creating daggers and and um, natural stone. Yeah. Here's the other one. We've got carved. Yeah. It's completely dressed. It's completely dressed. What what I'm going to do now? I'm going to call it a day because that's a lecture that has absolutely exhausted me. Um, now, I'm, hopefully, that's been of some use to introduce a site that maybe. Um, if we're all still in this room in 10 years time, um, we, we, can, we can revisit go Tepe. Tappy. Are there any questions? No, thank you, sir. I know Lynn will be with us because she's a witch. Um, if there's no more questions, I will hopefully see you all next week. If, if anyone wants, if somebody can stay behind and help me do the raffle, that would be really appreciative. Um, and we have a Pinot Grigo um, um, uh, and a couple of other things this week as well. So um, I'm going to call it a day. Any, if there's no more questions, have you all enjoyed that? Very. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Too many questions. Hello.
Yeah, yeah it's exactly. just a Where's scratch the from the top. Uh, 19, 1995. Oh, give that one a quick swirl because I've got something in it. Give it a quick swirl. Got that? Those are clean. There you go, darling. I, I didn't put it upside down. So I right, thank you very much. Was that worth it, Chris? Yes, I enjoyed it. Good bloody idea, but it's exhausting. Right.